it's our fault if we are in the championship today. We need to to go back straight away in the in the Premier League, and uh, I w- not only going back straight away in the Premier League, but win win the championship. When you look back at uh, our, our squad, it's unacceptable to to be in the championship today. With players from uh, Juventus, from Barcelona, everybody is under pressure at the club because. Um, because everybody knows that Gino is ambitious and he wants to 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 make uh, to make big things uh, with uh, with Watford. Obviously, he has he has a good technique. He's so fast in one on one. It's really difficult to play with it, to play against him. So yeah, he has he has everything to to be a top top player. You've had probably the best centre back or one of the best centre backs in Premier League history in Vincent Company, Toby Alderweireld, Jan the Vertonghen. It was the best. Company. Yeah. Wow, yeah. Kamba, that's going to cause a debate in history. I think so, yeah. But better than Rio. Why not? Van Dijk. But... Yeah, of course. You're multilingual, so you speak uh, German, French, Dutch, and English, right? I speak German. <laughs> you don't speak German? I thought, I thought you spoke German. Thank yeah, you. I, I, thought, I thought as well. <laughs> <laughs> Hello listeners and welcome back to yet again another episode of the Beautiful Game podcast. Before we continue, I just need to remind you, if you're not yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Also, at the bottom of this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up and help us to continue to spread the word of the Beautiful Game podcast. Now, as ever, I'm your host, Butch, and I'm joined by my faithful two co-conspirators, Dot and Dej. Gents, how are we doing? I'm good, Butch, man. We've missed you. (laughs) Man, I've missed you guys, man. Honestly, I've had to look for on, on, uh, look from the sidelines, man. I've been yeah. on international duty, but um, happy to be back in the starting lineup. As yeah, bro. Yeah, I'm good, boys, man. It's nice to have you back from the south of France. You know, you got your little suntan on, so yeah, man. It's, I'm happy that the full complement of us are back, you know, doing what we love. So yeah, it's good. Hundred percent. And of course, we are joined by a very, very special guest. This uh, gentleman has been a stalwart in the rear guard of the Watford defence ever since he signed in 2016. You know, he's played right at the top of the game in the, in, the, in the Premier League. He's played in various countries as well. And we also need to congratulate him because he very recently um, made his 100th appearance for Watford. And so without further ado, we welcome to the platform Christian Cabasele. Welcome, Christian. Welcome. Hi, guys. Welcome. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You Thank okay? you for, for taking the time out to speak to us, Christian. No, you're welcome. My pleasure. Yeah, so just starting off, you know, it's a pleasure to have you on our platform. This is something we've been trying to arrange for a while. And you told us that it will happen at the right time. So, you know, thank you for, you know, being a man of your word. Yeah, it's normal. I'm like this uh, since I was born, I would say. And uh, it was my pleasure to, to, join you, uh, to join you tonight. Okay, yeah, so just kicking off, obviously, you've started the new season. Watford obviously got relegated from the Premier League, which was a pre- pretty weird season last season, I would say, with obviously COVID happening. So if we're talking about the here and now, how would you assess your start to the championship season? Uh, I would say uh, average, average, to be honest, uh, because uh, but it's more average in the positive way because we started uh, the preseason the first uh, two weeks uh, with ten players because we had a lot of players uh, all, uh, all all over Europe and uh, when they when they landed to uh, to UK they had to um, they had to quarantine for for fourteen days so they they couldn't join us for for the preseason so it was really difficult the first uh, the first three weeks and uh, we lost a, lo- a lot of players. Uh, a lot of players wanted to leave the club, so we didn't have our squad uh, ready since the start of the of the of the season, and it was really difficult uh, to work in a in a good way. But even with that difficulties, uh, we are uh, we are in good in good position. We we for sure we didn't play uh, the, the the best football in the league at the moment, but we we are still uh, we are still uh, in a good in good position third uh, third in the league. It's it's uh, it's it's um, it's not what we expect, but it's uh, it's a good position to be to be in for the moment, and uh, and there is uh, plenty room of uh, of improvement. Yeah. 
So how, how was the feeling initially in the camp? You, you know, last season culminated in relegation. It was a real season flooded with turmoil. So how was it going into the new season? Was the players confident or were you thinking, oh, we've got a long season in the championship? How was the mentality in the dressing room? Uh, in the beginning, we were we were really sad, you know, uh, we because uh, we didn't have a lot of holidays, so we didn't have time to to switch off and come back fresh. I, I think uh, for a lot of players, we still had the relegation in our mind, uh, but after two two three days, we we were uh, we were like, uh, yeah, we need to we need to go again. We need to do our work. We need to. Um, to, to, to clear out uh, our our mistakes because uh, it's our fault if you are in the championship today we need to to go back straight away in the in the Premier League and uh, I w- not only going back straight away in the Premier League but win win the championship that's our goal uh, mm-hmm. personally I don't want to get promoted I want I want to win the league uh, being promoted is not enough for me I want to finish first like this we can. We can maybe uh, give a good apologize to uh, to the fans because mm. we 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 we, um, we were really really poor last uh, last season. Mm-hmm. And Christian, staying on the, the the topic of the end of last season, of course it was uh, a, a really sort of tight um, uh, uh, conclusion to the season, and it went right up until the death, right uh, uh, on 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 the final day. Um, and really, when you look at the table, there was there was very little in it. You know, it was it was just a point essentially. Um, so when you look back in hindsight, I'm, I, I know it might be difficult to do, but is there is there like one game you think to yourself, man, like you know, we we, we could have got over the line if we just won that game, or if we just drawn this game, or or like, is there any uh, game that stands out to you in particular when you think about the missed opportunity of last season? Not game, but games. Uh, mm-hmm. We 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 were leading at home against Everton to two zero uh, two minutes before the half time, and uh, at the end uh, at the end of the half time it was two two, and we conceded last minute uh, last minute goal against ten men. Uh, we were leading at Brighton one uh, zero. We score on goal. Uh, we were uh, drawing at Aston Villa. Uh, last minute, uh, uh, last minute we concede. So, uh, uh, if I if I had to, to 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 pick up one game from these three, it will be for sure the game uh, against Aston Villa because when you see the mm. the, the the league at the end, uh, if you if you if you if you take two, uh, two points to Aston Villa and uh, and get one point more, it's totally different. So yeah, this. Uh, it was it was a lot of games, but I would say this one uh, it it hurts it hurts a lot at the end here. Yeah, you mentioned that there was a lot of uncertainty at the club with players leaving. Obviously, Abdullah Dekore is left, Danny Welbeck's left, Delafoe's left. How close were you to leaving in the summer? Because I know there's a lot of reports about maybe you moving abroad or coming back to the Premier League, and I know there were some conversations that took place. So how close were you to leaving? Uh, listen, how close it's difficult to say because uh, at some moment you need uh, you need uh, the, 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 you, you 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 are not controlling the situation at one hundred percent. I had uh, and I still have four years left in my contract, so I wasn't uh, I wasn't uh, I would say this. Uh, 100% uh, deciding of of my future, uh, but at the end of the day, I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm happy that I can uh, I can I can say at Watford, as I said in the beginning, uh, that uh, that I can with uh, with uh, with other player try to try to uh, to apologize to to the fans, but by uh, promoting uh, by promoting the team in in the Premier League because when you look back at uh, our, our squad, uh, it's unacceptable to, to be in the championship today with players from uh, Juventus, from Barcelona. Uh, it's, 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 uh, it's unforgivable what, uh, what we did last season. 
Perhaps how, how did you personally feel about your individual performance? Because I remember a few years ago, you was actually being linked with some of the top clubs in England. So how did you feel about your individual performance last season? Uh, when, uh, when the team is relegated, it's difficult to say that one player play good. Uh, mm. uh, I think that uh, yeah, it's obvious that uh, me and uh, another player, we were not at, at, at our best level uh, for, for 38 games. Uh, yes, there were some games where we, we, were, uh, we were really good, some periods where we were uh, really good. Uh, but when you see the bigger picture, uh, nobody was at, at his uh, proper level uh, last season. And that's why, that's why we are in the ch championship today. Mm. And you know what, Christian? Earlier on, um, Dej touched on the fact that obviously last season was a very uh, interesting one, given, given the circumstances with, with COVID. But when I, when I look at your, your time at, at Watford so far, it's also been quite... Um, uh, a bit of an interesting situation because uh, I think it was uh, Walter Mazzari who was um, at the helm when you arrived in 2016. Mm -hmm. And since then, you've had six different managers, right? And I've always wanted to understand what that's like for the, the, the dressing room and the morale in the dressing room, you know, when, when, when things are changing so frequently, you know, is that a time that the, that the team sort of gets around each other and has to be even more uh, solid and, and, and in one one unit versus other times. Like how what how did how does it impact you guys in in the dressing room when there's so much change at a club? Yeah, it has a, it has a, a massive impact because you need to change everything every time that a manager is changed. Uh, he's not uh, he's not the same habits. He's not the same rules. He's not the same way to to play football. So you need uh, you need to change everything, and it's it's not it's not easy to. To to you know to have some uh, some co cohesion on on the long term, uh, mm -hmm. but I, at some point, especially uh, last season, uh, when uh, Kike Sanchez Flores were sacked, we 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 were uh, looking at ourselves and said, if you change a manager third times, maybe the problem is not the manager, maybe it's, it's us the problem. So uh, and that's why I think in the beginning with Nigel Person we we did so well because. At that moment, we said we cannot um, we cannot change manager again. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, we did uh, two two games before before the end. But yeah. we were like, yeah, listen, you you can bring ten manager, but if us the player we don't do the job on the pitch, it it won't it won't work. So uh, we 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 try to to to, to take our responsibility and and try to. To not hide behind the manager every time, because at the end of the day, uh, we are res responsible about uh, what is happening on the pitch. I mean, if you if you if you lose so many points at uh, the 19th minute of the game, it's not because the manager was bad or the tactic of the manager was bad. It's because we did a mistake on the pitch and we were not um, we were not good enough on the pitch. So. So yeah, it's difficult every time to change manager because uh, you like to have some um, uh, continuity in your in your work, some uh, to 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 do the same thing uh, for a couple of years to to try to to build uh, to build something good. Yes. Yeah, Budge makes an excellent point. Um, yeah, it goes back down to the Pozo owners. They're a you know conglomerate that owns several Italian clubs, and they've had a culture of hiring and firing. And from speaking to Watford fans, they want to know how the culture is like. How is it like working in that environment? Like, what, what do you players in the dressing room feel? Like, do you feel when the results are going bad, you know, the manager is going to get sacked? Or how, how do you feel? Yeah, we feel, uh, we feel, we feel bad. We feel, uh, we feel re really, uh, we feel the pressure because uh, the, the the owner put us on, on the pressure when we don't get the result that he wants. Uh, when you look back uh, two season ago, we were uh, we were in the FA Cup final and uh, we were competing for top ten finish. And uh, when you lost uh, when you lost three three games at the beginning of the next season, we get the pressure from uh, from from the club and everybody knows that. Um, 
Gino, Gino Pozzo, it's someone uh, really ambitious. He wants, he wants to do good, uh, good thing with, uh, with his football teams. And if there was uh, 1% or 2% of chance that uh, maybe somebody in the, in the squad or in the club will be on his road to, to this uh, success, uh, successful way, he will, he will, he will act uh, in consequences. And it can be the manager, it can be the, the players, it can be, uh, I don't know, maybe the, the chef in the kitchen. Uh, I, I mean, everybody is under pressure at the club because, um, because everybody knows that Gino is ambitious and he wants to, 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 make, uh, to make big things uh, with, uh, with Watford. But you see, working in that environment, does that sort of hand all of the power to the players? Because there's been a culture over so long that, you know, if results don't go our way, the manager's going to get sacked. So you as players, do you think that gives you an excuse to kind of almost not perform well? No, because if you don't perform well, the next season, maybe uh, you will bring another player to play at your position. And... uh, uh, it's not uh, it's not uh, it's not a good thing for a player to think like this because if you are an um, uh, ambitious player, you want to play uh, as well uh, maybe in the top teams in the world. But if you if you start with this mentality, yes, uh, maybe I'm not playing, so I will create problem, or uh, I don't want to be with the manager, so we play bad like this is sack. You will not get the 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 the, 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 the big career that maybe you dream you dream of. So. Uh, we don't get any advantage to to go on the pitch and be negative. I think everybody wants wants to win. After this question of moment, this question of of dynamic, uh, uh, but we want uh, we want the win. And uh, when you, as I said, when you play the FA Cup final, the next season you want to compete again for the FA Cup final. You want to compete again for the top ten uh, the top ten finish. You don't want to to be involved in a relegation battle. How do you ad- adhere to a manager's instructions, knowing that if they have a bad run, they can potentially be out of the door? So how do you buy into a manager's philosophy when they're not possibly getting results at a current moment, knowing that the owners can just pull the trigger instantly? We have to. We have to, because in football, you never know. Uh, even if a manager gets uh, five, six bad results, Maybe uh, the the next two results will be positive, uh, and so the manager will not be under pressure anymore. So you need to, you need to do your job. Uh, you need to give everything it's possible on the pitch and uh, be professional because we are paid to to try to give everything on the pitch. Of course, sometimes you can have a bad day, but you need to tr- to give everything on the pitch and. Uh, and uh, and do what the manager wants you to do because it's your work, it's uh, it's your obligation as a football player. If uh, if I was working uh, in a supermarket and I and I don't follow the instruction of my uh, of my uh, of my manager, I will get problems. So, <laughs> so yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's true. We are uh, we are in a good position as football player. We we cannot start to think. Uh, yeah, I want to sack the manager, so I will do this or uh, I'm not in the mood. Uh, I don't want to train now. We need to, we need to realize that we are uh, we are blessed and uh, we have the chance to do, uh, to do a passion as a as a as a as a work. So when you are on the when when you are on the pitch, you need to to give 100 percent, no matter if the manager will last one, two, uh, or three three years. Yeah. Do you think that horrific, you know, FA Cup final defeat almost took the confidence out of the players? Because to me, Javi Grazzo was a very good manager. Do you almost feel like the players lost faith in him after that game? I don't think so. Uh, I just think that when we start the season, we were thinking, yes, we, we finish uh, 11th. The, 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 the best result for, for, for the club, we, we did an FA Cup final, so... Next season, we will go on the pitch and everything will be easy. But, you know, in the Premier League, uh, everybody can uh, go on the market and buy, uh, and buy a 40 million player. So, all the teams were ready to, to beat us and, uh, and, and try to, to, take, uh, to take our place. And maybe we were not ready mentally to, mm. to go again and fight. And we were thinking, yeah, we, we play Brighton home. Uh, we beat them 
couple of times the, 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 the previous season, so it will be easier. And at the end, you finish with a 3-0 in your head and you don't have, you don't have time to, to think about this. That next, the, the, the week after, you need to play Everton and you get uh, a defeat as well. And, um, and after these two results, we were in a, in a very, not, not bad situation, but we were with a lot of negativity uh, already on, uh, on us and a lot of pressure and we were playing West Ham or who spent a lot of money uh, the, 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 the previous summer and, and were in a positive mood. So at the end of the first three weeks, we, we had zero points. And, uh, and when, you, when you start very bad like this, it's difficult after to, 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 to get, uh, get points uh, easier. You know what, Christian, I wanted to ask you about, um, I guess, really the last 10 years of your career, because over this period of time, you, you made the transition from centre forward to, uh, to centre half. Um, and I think it was quite late. I think you were 20, was it 23? 23, yeah, 22. When, um, when, when, when you made that transition, right? Now, it's interesting because I, I remember once I had a conversation with somebody who told me that the, the, the most natural switch in terms of position is from striker to centre half because, you know, you, you, you understand the, the, the mindset, the movement, um, the runs of a striker. Um, so it, it bodes well for you transitioning into, to, into centre half. But I'm of the belief that you, we've seen more um, transitions from like, players that have played in wide positions to central positions. So you think of players like Bastian Schweinsteiger, Santi Cazorla, um, David Silva, Juan Mata. These guys were all wide players and they moved in, in, into more central positions. So I guess I wanted to ask you, you know, is, it, 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 in, in your case, was it a very uh, natural move for you? Was it, was it a difficult one? Do, do you agree that it is a, um, you know, in, in terms of the different positions that, that, that players can can um, you know uh, swap and change for is is the striker to the cent center half the the most natural one? Uh, for me, it was a strange one. It was strange because uh, uh, when uh, when I went on the pitch on the training pitch to to start the training, and the manager came to me and said, "Listen, we have a, a player injured in defense. He will not be back for the start of the season. I will put you there, and we will see." I was like. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we will see. <laughs> we will see, but you, 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 you react like, yeah, I will do. I was reacting like I do this training, but at the end of the training, I will call my uh, my agent to to find me something else because I don't want to be a, a defender. And uh, everybody in the team was starting was starting uh, calling me, yeah, go, let's go, Marcel Desailly, uh, let's go, show me what you got, and all this stuff. So. So yeah, it was it was really strange, and it, it, it's not it's not really natural because yeah, you you can go from striker to midfielder and after defender, but from striker to defender at twenty three, it's it's really un, unusual. But obviously, it was uh, it was uh, maybe the best best thing happened in in my career, and uh, and I'm uh, and I'm glad that uh, that I did uh, I did well at that position. Yeah, so um, Christian, as you were saying, you've played with players that have played at Barcelona, Juventus, top clubs. You've got a player in your team, Ismail Lazar. I want to speak about him heavily because this is someone that has been linked, you know, with a move to Manchester United as a possible alternative to Jadon Sancho. We saw Crystal Palace put in a heavy, heavy bid for him. You've played with top attackers in European football. You've played with Kevin De Bruyne, Hazard. Do you think Ismail Lassar has what it takes to get to that top, top level? Yeah, he has the potential. He has the potential for sure. After it, it's uh, how, uh, how he's working uh, every, every day, how, uh, how, uh, how, uh, how luck uh, as well he, he gets during his career in terms of avoiding injuries, avoiding missing a lot of games. But... Obviously, he has he has a good technique. He's so fast. Uh, 
in one on one, it's really difficult to play with it, to play against him. So, yeah, he has he has everything to to be a top top player. It's just question now to to work uh, day by day and uh, see uh, see uh, see if it's possible to to maintain this uh, this uh, this uh, this form this uh, this uh, this ability uh, on on the long term. So how, how good can he be? Because we saw him at his devastating best when he absolutely destroyed Liverpool last season to take their unbeaten <laughs> record. <laughs> how good is he? Yeah, he's, uh, as I said, he's really, really good. Uh, uh, he, 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 it was even a problem for us last season at uh, post, post lockdown because he was so good that at some point, mm-hmm. Our tactic was, uh, yeah, give the ball to Ismar. He will <laughs> with the rest. <laughs> but but you, can, you, 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 you cannot do that when, uh, when, when the guy just arrived in England and he's, mm. he's only 21 years old. But this is not another subject. But to talk about Ismar, yeah, that, that sums up uh, the, 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 the quality he has uh, leading, uh, leading the... the, the, the the front line, like like he did last season, he wasn't easy, but he did it really well. Uh, so I hope he will uh, he will he will play again in the Premier League with me with Watford, and uh, and after uh, yeah he he has uh, he has everything uh, that he he needs to have to be a top top player. Mm, so how is he as um, a character? Because when he first came into the Premier League. He wasn't playing games and there was a lot of outcry from the outside saying, is Mailer, he should be playing games, he's quality. And we sort of saw those images at Anfield where he was speaking to Sadio Mane and obviously Troy Deeney walked past and Sadio said, Troy, look after his Mailer, look after him. So how is he as a man? Yeah, in the beginning, he was really shy. Uh, he, he, he didn't, he, he didn't uh, speak uh, so, so much. But now he's uh, yeah he's a really really good guy. He's really funny. Uh, he doesn't he doesn't speak good English, but he's really funny even with the with the English uh, English guy uh, in the team. So uh, so yeah, he has uh, he has a good uh, a good personality. He's uh, he's a good man. Uh, he keeps uh, his feet on the ground, and uh, and I think yeah he, he doesn't really need someone to to take care of him now uh, mm. because he's well settled in the team, well settled in England. Uh, so um, so yeah, it's a real pleasure to 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 be to be with him uh, every day. You know what, Christian? I wanted to ask you about another player that you've played with in the past. So he was your your strike partner uh, uh, a few years ago when I think you were playing at, at Marlin at the time. Yeah. In, in yeah, it's Venteke, right? Christian Venteke, yeah. <laughs> of course. So he's obviously currently applying his trade uh, in the Premier League for, for Crystal Palace. And we know over the past few seasons, you know, he's, he's had a lot of issues with, with injuries and been in and out of the team. And so he's, he's unfortunately not been able to, you know, re- regain the form that he, he had when he first sort of burst on the scene at, at Palace. I think in his first season, he had like, 15 goals in, in, in 30 odd appearances, right? So I guess I, I wanted to ask you, you know, do you feel that this season he could, um, you know, he's got what it takes to, to, to regain and, and find that form again? Do you, do you, you know, you, you, you've, you've worked with him closely, you know, you, you know him behind the scenes, you know, um, do, do you feel like he, he can find that form again? Yes, of course. Uh, he still, uh, still has time to, to try to, to 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 find uh, to find this form again, uh, he just need uh, that couple of goals uh, in in a row in uh, in uh, in one two 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 games two three games and he will get his uh, his confidence uh, boosted. Uh, so of course it's not easy now that he he is not uh, maybe the number one for 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 Roy Hodgson, but. Uh, if uh, I'm sure he, he just need uh, this goal, he will uh, will uh, take all the pressure off him uh, because I was striker. I was in in that position when when you don't score for 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 a long time, a long period. You just feel that uh, yeah, I need to score on this one. I need to score on this one, and you are not maybe uh, 
uh, natural in your in your movement, natural in your finishing, because you you are so obsessed with the with the goal uh, that you you don't do things uh, like like you should do. So it's just a question to 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 stay to stay on the pitch and um, and uh, avoid injuries and uh, have uh, three four games five games. It depends uh, how long the, the manager will will wait for him to score and. As soon as they will score, it will be the the, the, the Christian Benteke that we we knew from uh, from Aston Villa and from uh, and from Liverpool. Yeah. You know what's interesting, Christian? I just want to get your view on the debate about ball playing centre backs or defenders first. Where do you stand? Do you feel that you need to be great on the ball, or is it defend first and? I don't mind how I am on the ball. It's all about defending and stopping goals from going in. Uh, we need to find uh, the right balance. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, if you can be uh, both playing centre back, but at the end, if uh, if uh, if you lose uh, every game uh, by two or three goals, what's the point to to have good centre back with the, with the ball? Uh, I mean. Uh, you need to, it's a question to find the right balance and uh, to find uh, to 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 be to be good on the ball of course because now uh, the, the, the 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 football uh, changed and uh, you cannot just get the ball and uh, kick the ball out or kick the ball away but you need uh, you need as well as a defender uh, uh, recognize the situation where you can uh, play from from the back and maybe sometimes put uh, Put uh, put the ball in the stand. Uh, at the end, it's just question about uh, being efficient. You need to be efficient in what you do. And uh, now you, every every manager starts from the back, so you need to be uh, you need to be the this quality with uh, with the ball for sure. But I repeat, you need to be as well efficient and recognize when you can do it when uh, when you cannot do it. Yeah, I want to talk about your international career. You've made two caps for um, Belgium against Holland and Japan. Um, how is it, you know, playing in such a team that's littered with talent? You know, you've had probably the best centre back or one of the best centre backs in Premier League history in Vincent Company, Toby Alderweireld, the Jan Vertonghen. It was the best. Company. <laughs> yeah. Wow, Kamba, yeah. that's going to cause a debate <laughs> in history. I think so, yeah. What better than Rio? Why not? Van Dijk. Be- yeah, of course. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is gonna. <laughs> why? Why do you say so, Christian? Why? Be- because maybe uh, me, I know uh, company since since he started at sixteen years old, and uh, and maybe that's 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 the thing that people don't know that at sixteen years old he was already that good, and uh, in terms of of leadership, in terms of uh, the training. I mean, I saw him at a training with the Belgium national team, and he's the same uh, as on the pitch in official game. And um, that's that's what makes me say that it's it's probably the 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 the, the best in the in the in the Premier League uh, Premier League history. If if not the best, it's for sure it's top two, wow. easy the top two central back. I I I I don't see on a yes Van Dijk. He's a, he's really 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 good. But for the moment, he just won the. When I compare with company, uh, I don't. I'm not saying that Van Dijk is not good, but I compare him with with company. Company won a couple time, uh, couple of times the, the Premier League. Van Dijk at the moment he just has won. Uh, so so yeah, it's re- it's really tight, really tight. But I will give, yeah, the first place to to company. I, uh, so come yeah. on, in the current <laughs> game. In the current game, for me, there's a real dearth of centre-backs. There's not that much quality, in my opinion. There's probably Van Dijk at the very top right now. Then you're literally picking bones out of the rest, in my opinion. So, right now, in the current game, who is your top five centre-backs that are currently playing football? Uh, Right now, I would say Sergio Ramos. Sergio Ramos, uh, Mm -hmm. Van Dijk. Uh, uh, yeah, it's not it's not easy to to say th- uh, five like this. Mm, that's the problem. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah. So which centre backs have you got your eye out thinking, you know what, this boy, he can become potentially the next big thing. Are there any mm. young centre backs up and coming that you've got your eye on that you're interested in? Uh there is uh there was the guy in Leipzig. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's my guy. I think <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not I'm not watching uh, a lot of uh, Dutch football, but I saw him in the Champions League uh, quarter final or semi final, and I was like impressed because he takes the ball, he, he runs with the ball, and after in the duel, he's so strong. So, uh, so yeah, it, it, it can be really, really good uh, centre centre back here. Cabs, very quickly, sorry, boy, just a quick question because there was a big upheaval um, after the Virgil van Dijk injury, um, Jordan Pickford, with that horrendous tackle. But have you ever felt like a player has gone out to do you personally or that just doesn't happen in football? Yes, it's a, it can happen. It can mm -hmm. happen for, for some reason. You know, sometimes players... Uh, have some words in one game and after in the next game you just remember what this guy said and you you just go and said yeah we'll go strong on him but i i don't think that any player in the world wants to injure another one uh yeah. you want maybe to go really strong on him uh maybe to scare him uh, maybe to say hey, listen i'm today i'm here it's my uh, it's my territory but I can't imagine that a player wants to injure another one because it's really tough uh, when you see now Van Dijk is out for seven, eight months, nine months. It's 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 really tough, and uh, nobody wants to be in that position, especially uh, uh, when you when you know how hard is it to come back from an injury. So, what was your thoughts on the tackle? Uh, listen, it's, 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 it's difficult. It's difficult to. To, uh, to 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 try to understand what uh, Pickford was thinking because as I said I can't imagine that a football player wants to injure injure an, another one uh, first you will get a big big suspension uh, three four games uh, and then you 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 just um, Put some difficulties in in a, in a, in a somebody in in the life of somebody else. So you need to be a really really bad person to 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 do it on purpose. So I I I t I'm tend to to think that yeah it was it was really bad accident. It was probably avoidable yes, but um, there was no. Uh, <laughs> I, I I hope I hope that there is no one player in the world that go on the pitch and said uh, I will uh, I will injure someone today. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Well said, um, Kaba. Um, I wanted to say, uh, obviously, you're playing with a golden generation, as people call it, in Belgium. You're the same age as Kevin De Bruyne, Eden Hazard. These are players with world level ability. Just speaking about Eden Hazard quickly, um, he's someone that took the Premier League by storm, you know, got his massive, massive move to Real Madrid. And you still hear a lot of people say that maybe he just plays the game for fun and almost questioning his temperament that he hasn't got that sort of killer instinct to make at Real Madrid. I know he's been injured and there's been some bad luck in some quarters, but how is he like as a person and do you see him making a success of his time at Real Madrid? Yeah, I think he has uh, he has all the all the abilities to to be the the player of the team, the the, the next the next Cristiano Ronaldo there. Um, uh, he was really unlucky with the, with the injuries, um, especially the, the the second one when it was uh, Thomas Thomas Meunier who, who injured him. So uh, so yeah, he was really unlucky unlucky with that. Um, after yeah, as a person, he's he's really really good person. He's not thinking. Yes, I'm. I'm a Denazar. Uh, I don't. I don't care about you. Or I'm. Um, I'm think I'm. Uh, I'm. Uh, I'm over uh, anyone else. He's really open. Really, really funny guy. And uh, and yeah, man, he has the, the the vision of football about you know. Uh, I want to enjoy football. Uh, 
for him, football is not uh, is not only about stats, about scoring goals, about assists. He just wants to enjoy and 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 play football. Uh, maybe he will he will need to change this in his mind. Now he is uh, at maybe probably one of the biggest biggest world in the world, and he needs maybe to 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 try to be more uh, more selfish and uh, more looking for 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 his stats because. At the end of the day, it will be compared with uh, with Cristiano Ronaldo, even if Cristiano Ronaldo is another player from another planet. But people uh, are respecting a lot, a lot from him now that he's playing uh, for for this big team. So he will uh, he will have uh, he will have uh, uh, a lot of people maybe to convince. But but me, I'm sure uh, he will uh, he will succeed there. Last one from me, um, Christian. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Um, racism in football. You've been, you know, abused racially online and you said it's, it's, it's a disgrace, it's disgusting. And I feel you even said that it's worse online than what it is in stadiums. So how do you feel about racism on social media? Yeah, for me, it's, uh, uh, as you said, it's, it's, it's worse that um it was then uh, a people who is in a, in a stadium who, who who do something like this because in the stadium you have kind of excuse and even if it's not an excuse but you are in the around the uh, you are surrounded by the 10,000 people who are doing the same thing with uh, alcohol sometimes you do stupid things so you just do a, a stupid thing uh but when uh, when you do it on social media, it's like now I'm uh, I'm at home. Uh, I will pick up my phone. I will go on uh, on uh, on the social media of a player, and I will start to read. And oh no, this is not good. So he re- he, he, he delete the message, and after he write a new one, maybe more aggressive. You know, so you have time to think about what you are doing. Mm-hmm. You can you can start to to write the message, and after say no, what I'm doing is not good. So I will not send it. But when you press the button, send the message, that means you had time to reflect on what you are doing and you know that it's not good. Uh, so that's why I said it was, it was worse uh, than, uh, than something happened in the stadium because you have plenty of time to, to reflect and plenty of time to, to, not, uh, to not do it. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more with you, Christian. And honestly, we all know that you know, social media platforms should be doing more, right? It's, it's always, there's always a question, oh, should they be doing more? We all know that they should, but why they're not doing more about it is, is, is what I'm, I'm dumbfounded by, to be quite honest. Um, what, what I wanted to ask you, Christian, is taking things actually off the, the field, right? Now, I know that um, Congo is a place that uh, you hold dear to your heart because your, your parents are from there. And of course, we, we see all of the, you know, really, really sad things that are happening in, in, in Congo at the moment. I guess what I wanted to ask you is, um, you know, what really what, what Congo means to you and, and maybe further down the line, once you've finished playing or what, uh, and whatnot, do, do you ever see yourself maybe going back to um, do uh, sort of any charity work over, over there, perhaps? Yes, Congo is, uh, is is the country where where I was born. Uh, so it's it's a special uh, special country for me for sure. Um, I, wa- I I planned to 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 go to go there in 2016, but when I get the the call up from uh, from the Belgium national team, uh, I sh- uh, I had to cancel everything. So I was disappointing, and after I didn't have the chance uh, to to go to go back there. So, uh, so yeah, I, I was thinking about this uh, a long time ago. That after my career, I, I will try to 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 be involved in terms of charity because uh, you know when you do this kind of thing, you you need to follow uh, to follow the process. So you need to be able to go there or whenever you want. And I'm not sure that now I I have the possibility to do that, but. As soon as uh, my career is finished, I will, uh, I will, I will work and uh, try to find some uh, something to do up there because my parents, my parents grew up there. I know the situation there. I know 
where uh, how, uh, how how they they grew up it wasn't easy it's mm. not easy for a lot of people there so i'm uh, i'm uh, i'm um, i'm in good position now to help to help people and i need uh, i need to not forget uh, from where i from and uh, i will uh, i will think about something else yeah, well said christian um yeah turning attentions back to obviously belgium have you had conversations with Roberto Martinez about a potential spot in the Euro 21 squad? And do you believe that playing in the championship will, you know, be detrimental to your chances of actually making the squad next year? Uh, yes, I spoke, uh, I spoke with him. I spoke with him and, uh, and uh, obviously what, uh, what we talk about, it's between him, uh, him and me, but... I, I'm, I'm still thinking that I have the possibility to to be call up. Uh, I mean, if if Watford uh, is uh, is a uh, is first uh, with uh, 10, 15 points uh, more than the second, uh, and that I mean important in the team, an important player in the team, I think I uh, I still have the possibility to get uh, to get my chance at at the end of the season. Uh, but you know there is a lot of things that you you can control uh, injuries uh, maybe even the the, the covid situation uh, we don't know how how it will be uh, next week or into in two three weeks or so it's difficult to to see uh, so long uh, so long forward so i try to to take uh, game by game see uh, see if i if i can uh, keep uh, keep a high level and uh, and stay uh, stay available for for the national team and for for the next uh, the next call up yeah Christian final question for me um again this isn't uh necessarily a, a question which is a, a, about you know you on on the pitch but more so about you at home so the man that is Christian <laughs> Cavadelli you you're multilingual so you speak uh, german french Dutch and English, right? I speak German. <laughs> you don't speak German? I thought, I thought you spoke German. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, thought, I thought as well. <laughs> <laughs> so which, which languages do you speak, Christian? French, so, Dutch, English? Yeah, as, as I said to, to, to the club sometimes, I speak uh, uh, a little bit of everything. Uh, but... But the, 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 the language that I, I speak well uh, is French, uh, English, a uh, little bit of Dutch, yeah, a little bit of Spanish, a little bit of e Italian. Oh, wow, uh, okay. Yeah, but it's a little bit of everything. So it's, I, I can't keep a conversation in that, in that language, but yeah. uh, I can understand because it's, it's quite similar um, as French. So. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, but German, yeah, uh, I can only say uh, "ich liebe dich." <laughs> I don't actually know what <laughs> what does it mean, but I can, it's the only thing that I can say. <laughs> the, the reason why I was going to ask Christian because I wanted to know, um, you know, which which language you speak. I know you have a son, a young son, so I was going to ask which language you speak to him at home, and I wanted to know, you know, how important you feel it was for him to have. Uh, multiple languages and understand multiple languages as well. Yeah, so uh, so at home we speak uh, we speak French uh, because my uh, my wife uh, my wife only only speak French. Uh, but he started school uh, last last year and uh, since uh, since this year he he, sp he speak uh, quite uh, quite good English. So um, so yeah, it's really important for for him to have. Uh, to have uh, this in his mind that it's not only about uh, speak one language or it's not on, only about uh, people from the same the same country or the same culture. Uh, in my family, we have plenty of culture. My friend as well come from from different countries. So um, I think uh, my my family is quite uh, the, the 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 small represent, representation of of the world now. Uh, we are not close in the same uh, in the same uh, in the same culture, and this is the this is the best thing uh, that happened in my life. 
No, well said, Kaba. Um, yeah, just finally, you know, it's been a pleasure to have you on the platform. You've provided so much insight into football, general topics. It's been a real pleasure. Like, if there was one message that you were going to give Watford fans tuning into this podcast, what would it be? Uh, I, I, want, I want to win the championship. Simple as that. And I think it's the same... Uh, it's the same, uh, the same thing for for all uh, all the players in the changing room today. Uh, and I I repeat, I want to win the championship and not getting promoted because I think that there is big difference with the with the two. Uh, you can be promoted by finish fifth, uh, uh, by finish uh, uh, yeah fifth or sixth in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. and after doing the doing the playoff is not the mm-hmm. same as being champion in the championship so mm-hmm. for me it's really important and uh, i don't think there is need to to say yes i, I i'm sorry uh, because last season we 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 were relegated or i apologize because we were relegated to be honest for me this world it's it's it's, it's bullshit it's what's mm-hmm. happened on the pitch uh, mm-hmm. it matters and and uh, if we get uh, if we get champion, this will be the the the, the best uh, the best uh, 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 apolo- apologize that we can uh, we can give to mm-hmm. the fans. Oh, it's been brilliant. Absolutely, I think that's perfect. There's there's yeah. nothing <laughs> need to say. That's the best way we could have ended this uh, this um, this this interview. Thank you so much, Christian. We really Thank appreciate you. taking the time to speak to us. We're gonna wrap it up there. Once again, I want to remind you, if you haven't yet liked this video, please make sure you do and subscribe to our YouTube channel too. Um, you can follow us on Twitter at podcast underscore TVG and on Instagram at pod underscore TVG. And we've got a lot more coming your way. So make sure you stay locked, stay tuned and continue to share uh, uh, our episodes and content with all of your friends, family members, work colleagues, so on and so forth. We're going to call it a day and wrap it up there. Until the next episode, over and out. Peace.